Thank you so much for joining me on the show today, Digbo. And let's look at that rebound we're seeing in the equity space. So, if, uh, you know, we're seeing the banking sector driving that, uh, that resurgence. So for you, what's playing out here? Yeah, um, this is not unexpected um, because when you look at uh, what's currently playing out in the fixed income space, um, there's no other destination that people want to put their fund than to actually uh, actually uh, visit the, the uh, equity markets. And uh, we've been seeing a lot of activities around that and uh, we're, in so we're in surprise about what is happening. And because if you check some of those names in the in the markets, if, for example, PK is Zenith, for for instance, and you look at uh, the, the expect the expected dividends of like two hundred fifty combo, and you compare with uh, the current price, you will still get a dividend yield that is taking you to close to a double digit, and that is. Um, that's a better return for any investor compared to what you can get in the treasury bill space. So as a result, we've been seeing a lot of activities around that line. And in the same vein, despite the COVID-19 crisis, we've been seeing the, the banks showing out a very good uh, report uh, in terms of financial uh, result. And uh, it's not connected to the fact that they are also making a lot of income from the trading, uh, their trading portfolios. And uh, that's also helping them to augment uh, the shortfall that could have uh, come as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. So all in all, you know, the equity market is very active, and um, we expect it to still be active for, for quite a number of time before before we see um, uh, uh, retracement in that in that in that space. All right, let's come into the fixed income market and what we can expect today from the treasury bill auctions. Uh, like I, I actually uh, mentioned earlier, on, I said that the, the treasury bill market currently is not um, a destination for some uh, investors, again, considering the fact that um, the return are so low. And uh, if you look at the last um, the last uh, stop rate for a one-year instrument is about 0 0.3 levels, percent levels for a one-year instrument, and uh, that's a landmark rate. And, and um, currently, as we speak, today's auction, we expect uh, we are expecting a rollover of about 130 billion compared to the 150 billion that is maturing the system, and as a result, that will also be struggling for investment destinations. And as a result, I expect uh, the treasury bill uh, auction to actually close lower than where we saw it last year. Uh, so last uh, auction, so it, the, the, like a one-year paper, we expect it to actually uh, clear around the uh, 0 0.22320 levels uh, for this uh, for this auction. All right, still a lot when you look at what's playing out there, though. But um, are you saying that we're seeing that that um, uh, focus shift to the bonds instead? Then, yeah, you know. But one thing about this is that uh, when you have interest rate expectation, your interest rate expectation sometimes judge uh, your investment strategy. There are times that when you have a view that the interest rate might start going up, you don't want to go and lock into a long dated instrument or more like a bond. You want to stay in a short dated instrument so that you can really uh, roll over into a new and um, better return investment. Immediately, uh, the, uh, the a huge, the rising in, in, in interest rates start crystallizing. So as a result, that's one of the reasons why we are seeing a lot of people putting their money in short data and instrument as treasury bills, or also play in the shorter end of the bond space. So uh, we tend to, see, we feel that that will continue um, in a short to medium term while um, the market, will, uh, while we are waiting for market to correct itself on, on the yield spectrum. Uh, but looking at the general financial markets for the rest of the week, talking about the equities, even the bonds, and even the almost almost uh, auctions as well, though, you know, how should investors play play in for the rest of this week? Yeah, I, I think for the rest of the week, um, we will see also see people um, cherry picking instruments across uh, across maturity. And um, in the bond space yesterday, we saw some people looking at uh, the belly of the curve, like the 2029, 20, 2023, 20, eight. Uh, maturities and also some are also looking at the long end of the call the the 50 year uh, the 30 year instrument that 20 20 50 instrument so it's is is based on on the um the risk appetite of um, investors as we speak currently some investors are playing currently at the short end of the curve and why some more maybe basically they are doing more of uh, alm asset and liability management and they are trying to map their assets and liability out immediately. Some of those uh, institutions are also playing the long end of the curve. But in summary, uh, we'll see more activity in the short end of the curve 
compared to what we'll likely see in the long end of the COP, considering the, the tone of the MPC meeting yesterday. 